So there's a few more things you're going to want to know about before moving here. And in fact, this video covers seven things that you might not know about, but you're going to want to know about before making that move to Bowling Green, Kentucky. And we're getting after it right now. All right. Even though Kentucky's a red state, we have a blue governor. I don't know why that is, but as of the 22, uh, 2022 elections, Warren County is now a red county. And the Republicans out, the Republican voters outnumber the Democrat voters now. So that, so that more or less says, yeah, we are a red county. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it being in a red state, being in a red county. Not all counties in Kentucky are red. There's a couple of blue ones. But I like being in the red personally because that still gives me the freedom of thought and the right to keep and bear arms. So, if you're not really into that kind of thing, you might want to reconsider. Re I mean, seriously, reconsider your move to Bowling Green, Kentucky, or Kentucky uh, in general. You know, like I said, we're red, and uh, we're going to get into uh, constitutional carry. Well, that's next. Uh, number two, uh, constitutional carry. As of 2019, we're a constitutional permitless carry state. Let me read you what that is, so you know, so you know what it is without. Just going on hearsay from what you might see on the uh, uh, mainstream media. Here's what it means: uh, SB 150, so-called constitutional carry or permitless carry, was passed by the Senate on February 14th of 2019 by a vote of 29 to 8, and passed by the House of Representatives on March 1st, 2019, with a vote of 60 to 37 and signed into law by then Governor Bevan on March 11th of 2019. Thank you, Governor Bevan. Now, I guess the reason, you know, we have a, a blue governor, maybe he's okay with guns, but he didn't, as far as I know, he didn't try to change anything because pretty lopsided on the vote here. So, but here's what the bill is. I mean, it's not just like anybody can have a gun legally and, you know, possess one out in public, conceal it or whatever, but here's what it means. It's real short. Uh, persons aged 21 or older and otherwise able to lawfully possess a firearm may carry concealed firearms or other concealed deadly weapons without a license in the same locations as persons with valid licenses under KRS 237.110. Pretty simple. If you're a law-abiding citizen, you may possess and carry a firearm, according to this. Now, I encourage you to go look this up yourself. OK, uh, number two, and there's only two things here. Uh, nothing in this section shall, shall be construed to allow the carrying or possession of any deadly weapon where it is prohibited by federal law. Now, there's certain places you can't carry a firearm, like courthouses, federal buildings. Just, you know, it's all just look it up, find out for yourself. Totally understand it. But keep in mind, you know. You go shopping or whatever, you're out and about. Now law-abiding citizens are able to, to uh, uh, carry a concealed deadly weapon. If that freaks you out, you might want to reconsider moving here, you know. Uh, also keep in mind that we are also a uh, open carry state. You might see people out in public with a firearm on their sides, and they may not have a badge on their chest, and they may not be an off-duty law enforcement. It might just be an average law-abiding citizen with a pistol or whatever strapped to their side. And who knows what other weapons somebody might be carrying lawfully in this state. As long as you're a law-abiding citizen, you're able to do that. If you're a felon, well, you shouldn't be doing it anyway, right? So it's now the good guys can protect themselves from the bad guys. So that's just something to think about. All right, before we go any further, I'm Brad Petty with the Living in Bowling Green, Kentucky team. And if this is your first time to the channel and you want to learn everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play, and a few things you might not like about living here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. That way you get notified each time we drop a new video. And honestly, we get so many phone calls, emails, and text messages from people moving, relocating, or investing here that we absolutely love it. So if you're even thinking about moving to the Bowling Green or Warren County area, go ahead, give us a call, shoot us a text, drop us an email, Carrier Pigeon, Pony Express, 
Whatever it takes to get a hold of us, days, nights, or weekends, we got your back when moving to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Okay, number three. Uh, shooting and hunting here in Kentucky, out in the rural areas especially, which is pretty much what we mostly are here, uh, hunting and shooting is a rite of passage. I mean, you're brought up around guns, whether they're BB guns, shotguns, whatever, because at a young age, you know, the kids are taught how to shoot. They're taught gun safety. They're taught how to respect nature, and you just don't go out and just shoot everything up. You know, they're, they're taught how to handle guns at a very early age, which makes them a uh, more of a respectable hunter, okay? And they know their weapons. So you have to understand that living here, your neighbors, if you live out in, a, out in the county, outside the city annex or outside city limits, your next door neighbor may be in the backyard shooting a, a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun, whatever. It's perfectly legal to go in your backyard and like where I live. I'd go in my backyard and shoot if I want to, and I have. I've had the sheriff called on me from a neighbor. And the sheriff come out and said, well, what are y'all doing? I said, well, we're just out here shooting. We had shotguns. Well, I just want to make sure you're not shooting up the place. He just made a joke out of it because he said the neighbor called and he had to come out. <laughs> so, you know, he just got in his car and left. So keep in mind that might happen depending on where you live. And, uh, and along with that, when it comes like hunting, we talked about that, you know, people say, oh, well, why do you need 10 round? You know, we're allowed to have up to a 10 round magazine when we're out deer hunting. Okay. Well, why do you need that many? Well, we don't, but in some counties, some parts of the state here, if with the correct permits, if you see a deer, you can shoot it. If you see a deer, you can shoot it. You can shoot all day, every day during that particular season. There's no... Uh, there's no limit. So yeah, and, and also, as far as I know, there's no limit on how many 10 round magazines you can carry. So anyway, uh, that's the reason, uh, uh, not a reason, but that kind of explains like, you know, it's the right of uh, passage here. You know, you can fill your freezer, whatever, with deer and people, you know, they know how to shoot around here pretty much, pretty much. Uh, one more thing to consider though, during, especially in November, when the hunting season, the modern gun season is when that is, you know, there's a lot of uh, increased amount of deer and vehicle collision. And people think that it is a, it's because the hunters are in the woods, you know, pushing the deer out. That's not the case. The deer are running crazy. The does are nuts. The bucks are really nuts chasing the does because it's mating season. And they get out there and they goof around and act stupid too. They just run wherever they want and they will jump in front of your car. So be on the lookout for that, especially in November and the other 11 months as well, depending on where you live out in the county. So just keep all that in mind. It's not the hunters. Hunters, it's more like nature taking its course. Okay, um, number four. Number four, rural areas. I have our time with that word, rural areas. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, you may be coming from a place that, you know, is kind of a built up area and you have sidewalks and lit sidewalks everywhere. Well. We do have those subdivisions here that do have sidewalks and they are lit. So you can walk on the sidewalks in the neighborhood, you know, and just cruise around there and do your afternoon or afternoon, evening walks or whatever. But if you live out in the county, outside the city limits, you're going to run into uh, areas that don't have sidewalks, but people are still out walking. Okay. So you got to be aware of that. And they may or may not have a dog with them, you know, or a pet, and it may or may not be on a leash. So just slow down, take your time on these roads because they are hilly and windy. But the big thing about it, though, when you're out there, and, and this may freak you out, I don't know. But when you come up on these people, when you're driving and you come up on a walker, they might wave at you when you drive by. So be aware of that. If that bothers you, you might want to reconsider where you live. <laughs> All right, number five, this is an issue. I mean, you may be moving here because of industry. We are a growing community here, industry-wise especially. Uh, and with that comes growing pains, and with all that's commuting, 
you know, traffic and uh, construction to alleviate the traffic jams and then tempers. But we get tempers because of traffic. We get tempers because of the construction to alleviate that traffic. So that's just something we're going to have to deal with that we deal with that you may have, uh, that you're going to have to deal with when you move here too, regardless of where you're coming from. Uh, it's going to be that way. But if you're from a big city, traffic here might not be a big deal at all. But if you're coming from a smaller community than Bowling Green or Warren County, you might think it's outrageous. So let me show you. I'm going to do a, a screen share here, kind of show you where some traffic traffic might be. See if I can find it. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, this is like industry wide or not wide but county wide industry stuff and what i'm going to do right up in here uh let's see let me zoom zoom in here okay right up in here this is north let me go back let me go back to um uh, right here is fountain square park right here i mean that's the square of old town bowling green okay that's where everything used to happen and there's still a lot of things going on there, a lot of little restaurants and bars. It's, you know, we're a, um, a college town. So it's pretty cool downtown. But up here, up, up through th this road here is 6880. It goes on up into Evanston County. And there's a lot of traffic, you know, free people from Evanston County coming in town to work. And then so in the mornings, all the traffic coming in right along here we get a little jammed up in this area here uh but then a lot of people zip on down and uh they'll make this little let me see let me show you let me try to you know they'll they'll come down here from Edmondson county and they'll zip in and make this little loop and then they're off and gone and then they go to town you know they're going to work they're going to work or wherever they're going so, uh, let me, oh, let me, let me get this going. So right here, right in this area here is where we get that jam up in the mornings, you know, and it's from people that, you know, they're coming down 6880 and they're making that little loop right into here. And it just kind of jams us up right in this area, especially in the mornings. And we get a little congestion not too not not too bad out here but mostly right over here so let me get rid of all of these marks so and, and that's because uh they're going into town but see we get a lot of people coming this way as well because of all this industry up in here we have a lot of industry just north of town north of bowling green i just showed you so you know we got just a lot of traffic there but they do have now where we can get on the interstate, you know, if you're coming from Franklin, we'll cover that in a second. Coming up I-65, now we got this new inter interchange here that we can just zip. They, they can just zip over this way, you know, right up 65 up here and into the industrialized section here. So there's a lot going on up here. Where and there's a new battery company of some sort coming in up here too. Uh, so we'll cover all that when they come in. And then right down here is the other industrialized, I'm going to say industrialized area, which I can't really, I'll just do this. I mean, it's all out in this area here. You know, all out here. Well, that's kind of big. I mean, let me, let me, let me, let me redo that. Um, actually, I'm going to. I'm going to bring it in some because that was that was just stupid. It's this area here, right? This area right here. And that's uh, 31W that we're having issues with as far as traffic that they are working on right now. So, or, or in the future, they're getting ready to start, or maybe they have started already, haven't been out that way in a while, but they have plans to alleviate some strain on Nashville Road 31W. And that's because people from Franklin, Franklin, Kentucky, they use this road a lot going to and from Bowling Green. 
whether it's here to the industrial area or they're zipping right up here, up here to Campbell Lane, and that's another clogged area. And in the other video, we talked about how Scottsville Road, that's where all of our restaurants and everything are. A lot of people work here as well. And, uh, oh, and to the people that think, oh, all we are, a lot of locals say that, oh, we're just a bunch of car washes and restaurants. We're a lot of gosh dang industry. And that's creating the problem. It's just, you got to get out and, know, you know, get out and see these things. Uh, but another area that they're working on is Cave Mill Road. Cave Mill Road, because this is all jammed up now, which creates a backlog here. Because look, I mean, look, all these, let's see, these neighborhoods, look at all these. You know, they get on Cave Mill Road, zip here, you know, up here, and they're going over to Scottsville Road. It's just creating a, a uh, you know, a traffic issue. So they're working on that. So that's what I'm getting at. We have traffic. We're having solutions. If you can't deal with them. It might be something to reconsider. All right, I'm going to stop that share for that. And uh, number six is the housing situation. What I would do, if I were you, if you're thinking about moving here, or maybe you have to because of work, it's still your choice, but whatever. You're going to thinking about making a move here. What I would suggest you do is make a visit here. Now, we are going to be doing some, you know, videos of different areas and different uh, subdivision uh, and, you know, that kind of thing to give you an idea of what's what it's like here. Because, like I said, there are sidewalks in some areas and some areas are not. Even though they are a subdivision, they may not have a sidewalk and maybe that's what you want. Or maybe you want to be in a certain area, a certain school district, certain, being closer to town, closer to that traffic. I don't know. But we're going to cover some of these things in upcoming videos. I'm just trying to give you guys an overview of what to expect when you move here. But I would suggest coming to visit for as long as you could and take a tour, an actual eyes on, hands on tour of some areas that uh, might fit what you're looking for as far as amenities and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, that that's what I would do uh, because... Let's get, to, oh, let me show you, see if I can show you here. Uh, I'm just going to show you like what's going on the last two months here, like November and December. As you can see, you know, in November, the average price was 274 and in December it was 253. I know it's all relevant as to what was actually sold, but it seems like the prices might be coming down, even though values are still increasing. The values are coming down and we are seeing some price drops, you know, not price improvements or price drops because they're still overpriced when they hit the market. It's just it's still ridiculous. Uh, average days on market are coming down a little bit, but we have less active listings. So we got 721 last month and 665 this month. What does that mean? I don't know, guys. It's just that things are looking up for the home buyer right now because the sellers are really starting to give concessions now and uh, really working with because they got equity. They want to cash out and they want they got things they got to do. They got to move too. So they're really working with buyers, but sometimes it's still taking a long time to find that perfect uh, area or house for you. So that's why I would suggest that you make that move. Come on down, take a, a vacation, three or four days, get some things lined up, contact us, let us know. Let us know what uh, what it is you're looking for and we can set some things up. If anything, we'll set tours up, you know. Uh, so drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all the, you know, the constitutional carry, the uh, the industry, the traffic, the, uh, you know, the hunting, the rural areas, everything we've talked about so far. Are you coming from a big city and this is what you're looking for? Or are you coming from a smaller city and you're thinking, wow, I don't know about that. You know, I don't know about living up there, but you know, whatever your concerns are, drop a comment below. Just let us know where you're moving from. Let us know what you like or might not like about living here. You know, I've, I've seen comments before. Oh, there's nothing to do in Bowling Green. Bowling Green's all, you know, well, it's because you don't get out is my answer. Really? What do you want to do? It's here in the surrounding areas, if not directly where you live, is within easy driving distance. So just let me know what you're looking for, where you look, uh, type of uh, place you're looking at. 
to move to. Uh, we're going to move on to, uh, let's see, number seven is uh, education. We're going, to, we're going to cruise into education. Number seven, education. Uh, according to niche.com. Now, if you're moving here with the family, you know, we haven't, I mean, there's still parks and everything, but we'll, we'll go and cover schools right now. According to niche.com, Warren County is ranked out of a hundred. Now, see, niche.com says we have 115 counties. I think we have 120. You know, you can Google that or whatever. But anyway, we're ranked number 11 as far as the, the just let me read it. Education. Warren County is ranked number 11 in the state of Kentucky. Also, we rank number four in these two areas. Healthiest and most diverse counties. Yep. I think there's a, uh, gosh, what did I read? There's a bunch of different languages spoken here. So diversity is your issue, is an issue for you. You might not want to, you know, you might want to reconsider. But out of the 115 or 120 counties, of the best counties to live, Warren County is ranked number five. So not too shabby, you know, it's not the best in the uh, United States. It's certainly not the worst. I mean, we have rolling hills. Anyway, we get into all that a little bit later, but living in Warren County is not too bad of a place to live. Pretty high rankings according to niche.com. And, uh, you know, and speaking of living here, guys, you know, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna do some tours. We're gonna show you a few areas you might want to live, and a few areas you might not like living here in uh, Bowling Green and Warren County, Kentucky. And we and uh, if you let us know what it is you're looking for, we can probably show you a few areas that you have never seen or even heard about or even searched for because you know they're not showing up or you don't know where to look. But the only way for us to get that information to you is. You got to give us a phone call. You got to shoot us a text, send us an email, carry your pigeon or Pony Express, whatever it takes to get a hold of us, days, nights, or weekends. We got your back when moving to Bowling Green, Kentucky. And until the next video, we'll catch you later.